Definitely here. Um, where is here at this point? I don't know. I can tell you the current time on my computer. Is you know what quantum physics says. I don't, Nick. You 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 can only tell. Uh, you can either tell the direction something's going, um, or where it is, and not both. Okay. Wait. My, it's too so late. You, so you can only frozen. tell where it's going. No, and no, where you, it you is. only tell either. Uh, as soon as you observe something, you observe you, something. you've already affected it, so your observation is, is obsolete and the information <laughs> is, is out of date. That's what it is. <laughs> Let's get into the game. So as soon as you look at something, it's we'll not where you think it is. We'll have this conversation, just not right now. I'm a little tired, <laughs> Nick. I'm a little tired. Remind me on another day. Um, let's get into it. It's the final match. It is a best of five? It's a best of yes, five. Yes, best of five. To determine who. Final match, best of five. To determine who's going to Singapore. Beginning with... Or, there are two players in this game. Nick, you... In the upper left hand location of Belshir Vestige, we have the red Protoss. Puck. And of course his opponent in the bottom right hand location of Belshir Vestige. Representing evil geniuses, the blue Protoss. Puck. They did not choose pink and red. Like they did uh, Blue and teal is pretty good too. Oh god. Why not just red and red? Let's just go all in. Blue and blue. Yeah, blue and blue. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to do that in the client, unfortunately. Is there another way? Let's see. And they, the, it, it's... Okay, when your enemy approaches, it's a different sound. <laughs> so, like, you don't know if it's another probe in your main. <laughs> it just, there's a sound that goes... That'd be amazing. Someone make the custom game, please. I would play the heck out of it. Um, shout out to you guys in the chat who have been here since the beginning. You know who you are. Oh, I thought of the best custom game. Okay. So there's a bunch of neutral probes all milling around, right? Neutral probes? But are they mining? or No, they're just running around in circles, right? Why? Are they controlled by players? No, no. They're just randomly running by, by in circles. So each, AI. Yeah. Each player has their own probe. Okay. But all the probes are the same color. Okay. And you can't tell which one's which. Yes. And then, like, whoever... And the probes one-shot each other, right? Yeah. So, but, like, if you attack a, a neutral AI probe, someone, it's going to reveal... Someone write this down. Right? It's, it's, it's going to reveal that you're... Not an AI, because you just attack something. Because AI doesn't attack, they just run in circles. Yes. So it's like a stealth thing, right? You try to figure out who's the player. I want to play. <laughs> you never get around it, bro. I want to play right now. That game would be awesome. Okay. That's great. I like that. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, we're not playing that game here. We're playing just standard, standard StarCraft II, Harvest Swarm, PvP here. Both players opening double gas and double gate. So uh, you're going to see some stalkers early on trying to control the map. Uh, th this two-gate opening is, is normally <laughs> with the idea of getting those stalkers on the map, right? I'm sorry. I'm reading the chat again. Uh. What are they saying? <laughs> What's up with the chat? What are you guys up to? Bucks underscore E says, eSports is the technology of the vehicle. I don't know why that is. Schrodinger's cat. There we go. There it is. Oh, God. The famous uh, quantum physics dilemma. Oh, man. Okay. Okay, let's focus on the game. Yep. Let's yep. chat. I'm going to minimize you. You guys have been nice to me, but you're distracting me too much. You guys are too funny. All right, on to the game at hand. We do have uh, three gateways coming down from uh, from Hawk. He's using a Mother's Core to scout his opponent from the back while the Stalker pokes in at the front. Meanwhile, Puck, after his first two gateways, adds a Twilight Council before his third gateway. Is Huck going to spot this? Uh-oh. Uh, no. Ooh. No. Does not spot the Twilight Council. Okay. Okay. So it's blink. It's blink. Okay. Yeah. So, but back home, what is what is what is Huck up to? He's just got gateways. Two gateways. Oh no! Is that a, a third gateway? Oh, so it's the three gates. So does he have a pylon? Is he getting ready to do some attacking here? Yeah. There's a pylon. He's got two stalkers there. This is a decent timing. Yeah. There's two sentries though. Yeah. He, he's trying to distract him with the. Actually, this could. That's, okay. The stalkers go back. It's a magnet. As soon as he sees it, okay, he sees the soccer, so he's pulling back. Is he going to try to front now? The he's going for strategy. it. Okay, he's trying he's to front. Sprint. Uh, holding his breath. <gasps> oh, and he gets by. Oh, this is, this the, is what, this this is is what happens famous, late at night. This is the famous Axlav missing a force field strategy. Yes. Um, it didn't work out for me. Will it work out for Puck? That's the question. Uh, Puck, oh no mothership God. core. No force fields now, and Huck has a superior army value to see here. And Huck knows exactly what his opponent is doing, right? Yes. Yeah, Robo immediately going down. Yeah, so and you know what? Huck's back away. He should away. expand, I think, right now. Yeah. 
I'd be down with Expand that. Expand and get immortal, um, and you're fine. And he has the full ten, as long as it's full ten overcharge by time, because there will be a Tommy before he gets immortal out, where there'll be blink right, and that can be painful. But as long as it's full ten overcharge, he should survive long enough to get immortal or two out. Um, yeah, I, I think I think Hux in a great position to expand here. He's actually going Robo and Twilight, so he may just be spending those resources to get Blink and uh, perhaps Immortals or Observers. He may just be saying, let's do a Micro War, let's go Blink on Blink. That would be a fun decision. Okay, so I think Huck thought about expanding, but then backed up. What, what, what are you thinking? I mean, he obviously knows that Puck is expanding right now, so... He either, I mean, he pretty much has to expand. He, there's no way he can really get a, an attack on, on Puck's expansion, I don't think. So, yeah, here we go. Next is coming out from Puck. I think he's just a little bit scared of, a, of like, a one base blink stalker attack. So he was not expanding until he knew his opponent was as well. Right. A little bit extra safe there. We do have some proxy pilots on from both players. They can warp and use the counterattack. First observer coming out from Puck crossing the map. Whereas uh, Huck is actually no observers from Huck quite yet, just focusing on the immortal production. Uh, Puck already has two observers on the field. Okay. Probably a little bit afraid of DT's action because he hasn't seen Puck's tech yet. Or Huck's tech yet. Sure. Uh, Wait, who? Puck has not seen Huck's tech yet. Okay. This is his first, you know, uh, endeavor into the base. Now he sees the immortal. Yes. Uh, he's being careful of a potential observer from Huck, so he's skirting the army. Doesn't want to lose this guy here. Meanwhile, I think Huck just got it with a hallucinated phoenix. So he is, uh, both players basically have total information right now. They know exactly what's going on. Okay, so we have, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. So from here, I mean, they're both getting expansions. They're both preparing for a mid game. And and is that phase of scary pushes kind of over? Because once the robo play starts happening, both players start being very defensive. Unless you see a drastic uh, tech switch, like Stargate or something, where you're trying to form a timing behind surprise void rays or something. Um, I feel like most, play most players are going to are relatively defensively getting probes out, maybe go for some uh, sort of some zealot runbys here and there, but generally just, just setting up, not taking silly engagements, and going to the late game, trying to cut as many corners as possible. Yeah, there's always that choice of how greed do you play. Right. Because if you try to go straight to Colossi super fast, go get all your gases, and your opponent like doesn't attack like what Huck is doing right here with you know a couple mortals and blink stalkers. Okay. Um, yes, photon overcharge is great defensively, but for example. Puck doesn't even have a Oh, no, he doesn't. I always say that. He does. He does have a Mushroom Core. Okay. Um, but if, if he didn't have the Immortal out, right, if he instead that was a support bay, yep. uh, he That's could true. be overwhelmed uh, by, by Huck. But I, oh, yeah, nice. I don't see this attack doing much. Like, kill the probe. Force fields are... Yeah, good point. Um, yeah, I don't see this ending the game. Yeah. I mean, like, he could cut the army in like half right the force now, fields. Does Huck like, take a third or something? Uh, I think he's, just, he's continuing to build probes. He's getting an attack upgrade. So he's, he's actually out teching. Puck right now. Oh, oh he's going I to love this. The this is great. So this is a great way to kind of beat, pick apart your opponent, or at least get him to sc be scared a little bit. Oh, I think, I think Puck was actually trying to bait him forward a little bit. Yeah, he's uh, also Huck waiting for. He's also expecting some sort of attack from the front at the same time. Puck was being very cautious with yep. the stalker force, which is you know totally fine. He, if he lost, I mean, right now, um, Huck is ahead, right? But if he loses all those stalkers, all of a sudden he's going to start falling behind a bit. Here we see a well, difference. There we go. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was looking we for. Got I was waiting for that. Mass gateways and Templar archives from Huck. So he's definitely going for versus Immortal the Archon. Day. Yeah, versus uh, the Colossi tech from, from Puck. Interesting. So Puck is going to be... Puck kind of has to be a little bit more... Gosh, who's going to take the third first, though, is my question. Because obviously both these... I mean, the five gateways added on, that implies that Huck might want to get something very done very soon. But he's also getting plus two uh, weapons. So if he does the timing, it probably revolve around that finishing. I, I could see him just taking the third base. Yeah, and that's, then that's yeah, what I think is coming there we go, yep. those guys, yeah. um, And the gateways are there just, you know, if, if, if Puck attacks, he has a lot of warp ins. Or, if, ooh, he killed that, that Phoenix. Actually, that's pretty big. Uh, Puck unable to scout the third base of his opponent, trying to get with another Phoenix. So th this Phoenix, of course, uh, his job is to see if his opponent's taking the third base right now. And Puck's actually going to double Robo Claw Sign. This is something. Like, I don't know if I like that against an opponent with mass gateways. Because your production is kind of slow. It's going to be. You know, his third base may be vulnerable to an attack by Huck. Um, or, of course, Huck could just go straight to air. Yeah, but. Uh, 
Actually, Hux, Hux, okay, Hux going double robo class himself. So it's okay. actually going to work out. Yeah, so this well is going to be attacks. this is going to be all about positioning at this point. Both these players have kind of accepted they're going to Colossi. There's going to be big battles. Time warp's going to be important. And now it's going to be all about taking your opponent off guard, trying to take it a little minor advantages here and there. We're going to see warp prisms probably made. A dark shrine would be kind of cool to see from either player. Um, it's always going to be, I feel like, uh, worth it. Even if it's, I mean, can't, static defense is going to start being placed as well. Um, but right now, both getting third bases. They both have scattered that fact as well. I mean, the, the scouting's been spot I mean, it's a situation if someone was still on two bases, they could try to come up with the timing to, to exploit the faster third from their opponent. But they're both kind of being like, okay, let's let's go, let's go, let's see, let's see what we can make happen here. So um, Puck has a, a lead in the robo units, which are often the most important units if no one's going for air. Yep. You can see he's got five immortals and two colossi against uh, just six immortals from his opponent factors. Uh, and and both players are building Colossi from two robots simultaneously right now. So it's a pretty small Colossi advantage for Puck. And in fact, if he crosses the map, it'll be roughly even Colossi in the engagement. Uh, Puck also is going double double forge. So he's trying to catch up on upgrades. But Huck already, you know, if you look at the upgrade tab, Huck already has two weapons against one of Puck's. And he's working on three weapons, whereas, whereas Puck is he's going to catch up by going double forge, but he is behind at the moment. Of course, the, the weapons upgrade is significantly more important than All the right. armor upgrade in PvP. Trivia question. Who's going to be the first to put down a Stargate? It's a good question. Um, I would guess Puck. Why? Uh, Puck is like a natural late game player, whereas Huck is more of an early game player. Okay. So Huck will be looking probably to hit a timing or engage, whereas Puck uh, like will a three base timing, like off plus three. Or I mean, it's just one. No one's like it's not really like a timing. It's more just sure. like he'll max out and be like, what do I do next? Oh, I just fight him and kill Got him, it. right? Got it. Whereas Puck will be, oh, I'm gonna max out. What do I do next? Oh, I I keep tacking and progressing Make sure next stage. When I remax or when I'm adding units after I lose them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll um, see. I mean, that's that's just a theory. We'll sure. Have to There's see a fourth that. base from Huck. He's gonna take that first. Um, hmm. They're both working on upgrades, both getting the Colossi out. I'm looking for the Stargate. Who's going to do it first? You know, uh, map vision is really important here as well, because if you get caught out of position, you just lose the base instantly. Yes. You um, kind of learned that a little bit earlier yeah. today. Um, so we can see both players kind of <laughs> have I'll their... I'll stop bringing that up. I'm sorry. <laughs> ...have their own half the map. Um, <laughs> this this pylon could actually be really big later on in the game. Like, a, yeah. a line of Zealots coming in here could... I mean, one cannon's not going to stop a billion Zealots. Uh... Puck actually has significantly worse map vision. He has nothing in, the, in this zone, which is, yeah. you know, that's make his that side of the map, too. That's yeah, and nothing in this zone either. Whereas, you know, if you look at Hawk, yeah. he's got this hole, he's got pylons, he's got stalkers. About, what do you think about obser observers right now? So it's kind of tricky. Like, you want to have one or two observers, but the gas is so important in PvP for making Archons and Colossi and even potential air transitions later. It's not like you want to make a whole bunch of scout. You'd rather do things like what Huck's doing and build pylons everywhere. Yeah, I like that. Because um, you can kind of... You can use them to warp into too, like, And you're going to get extra minerals. Yep. That's going to happen. Um, and, and the reason why is because you don't want to have... like Once you know you're both going late game with Colossi, you want some zelts. Uh, and of course, you want to be able to warp in tons of zelts okay. during the battle. But Here we go. you don't want them to clump up Okay, they're much. both maxed. Positioning is so important. Let's look at the units. And... Okay, it's, it's do some some shift Z action maybe here too. Yeah. The the oh yeah. So they're posturing right now. This is all about positioning. Where are you engaging? Where are you right now? Like right now, Huck wants him to cover this ramp. I think. Oh. Oh yeah. The, the, I think the he wants Nexus. This. Yeah, the Nexus will tank all the damage. But now it's not going in. It's coming from multiple directions. His Colossus here. aren't spread out. Um. Uh, Huck did a little oh. bit better, or actually Puck did a better job sp uh, spreading out his Colossus a little yeah. bit, but there was a one Colossus flank there from Huck, which actually helped him out because it diverted the fire of Puck's Colossus over to the right-hand side, and that means they're not hitting the left-hand side. So overall, I think, uh, you well... Know, but, but Huck's units were so clumped, his they front were. row that was on the so left strange. side... I'm so confused yeah, about they, that. They got annihilated, and that meant the, then the Immortals from Puck could go to town on Huck's Colossi, wow. and that's going to be the game. I'm... Oh, yeah. that, that's I why knew. I that was too weird to me. Okay, yeah, I knew I, something was happening there because his colossi were all clumping up trying to yeah. get close, and it's because he had he didn't have range, and that's kind of oh my gosh, yeah. oh that sucks. We were wondering like why why is all those guys yeah. have to clump up and go through the choke, and that explains it. Uh, 
Oh God. That's something we probably should have known. That's earlier, like but the worst feeling ever. It is what it is. Um Wow. I mean, I've been in that position where I forget maybe I'm playing Zerg and I forget yeah. speed. And then they're sending a bunch of lings at me, and I'm like, well, uh, I guess I'll make a bunch of slow lings and a spine crawler. Yeah, doesn't work. So, oh, Puck is going to take game number one in a situation that... Is that I, a fatigue thing, too? I mean... It may be. I mean, oh, we're getting late in night. Bad. These players are going to play pretty much all day. Uh, so, mistakes like that can happen. Yeah, and it's it's there's so much lead up in that game, and then it just came down to just not having range. Like, that's how do we emphasize how important that is? It, it is literally the difference between life and death, <laughs> dogs and cats, <laughs> apples and oranges. It's that's the difference, guys. It's a big difference. Oh, man. Uh, range colossi versus no range. So, there's colossi. good news Huck is not going to forget range in this series again not again yeah um, but he may be rattled to make other mistakes as he's you know right. kind of focusing on that so it is the best of five yes puck is up one to zero game two coming up next